Hi, my name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, we're going to be looking at creating immersive and engaging presentations online, perfect for online learning. So let's jump into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now the application we're looking at today is a cloud-based application, so it's on the internet and it's called Mentimeter. Now we're going to be looking at both the free and premium version of Mentimeter, so let's just jump into it. Now here I have Mentimeter open and what is Mentimeter? Well, Mentimeter is an application that will let you create slideshows, but with a twist. So these slideshows are very interactive and they not only encourage engagement, but they thrive off of it. So that engagement will be visually represented onto your presentation. So let's have a look at it. Now I'm already signed into my demo account here. So let's get started on creating our very first presentation. Now we're going to start by clicking on new presentation. Now let's say that you would like a little bit more help in building up that presentation. They also have a simple presentation builder. But for now, let's look at the new presentation button. I'm going to click on that button and this will open up the presentation builder. Now on this workspace, we have a number of different areas. So on the left hand side, we have an overview of all our slides and we can easily add multiple slides to our slideshow by simply adding a slide at the top. We can also insert a previously created slideshow. So when you click on that import button, it is going to allow you to drop your presentation slides in here. Now, as you can see at the bottom, it supports PowerPoint files, PDF files, and also Keynote files. This is a great way of reusing those slideshows that you've already created and then adding those interactive elements to it. We're going to start from scratch. So let's go ahead and create our very first slide. Now on the right hand side, we see the different elements that can be added into our slide. So here you can see we have all those special question types. So we have a multiple choice, a word cloud, open-ended questions, scales that then our students can move around, ranking, Q&A, all these different types can be inserted into your slideshow. So let's have a look at one of them. We're going to start with the multiple choice. So I'm going to select multiple choice and here at the top, I can now fill out my question. So let's go ahead and ask our students what their favorite color is. So what is your favorite color? There we go. We've now asked that question. We get a preview on the left hand side and you can also see that on our preview slide here at the top, it says go to menti.com and use the following code. That is what your students will be using to then submit their answers. Here we have a number of options. Let's just add green and then we can add blue and let's add red. Now let's say that this is a multiple choice and you don't necessarily want to use text, but you'd like to use images instead, that too is possible. So here on the right hand side, you can see we have this icon that allows us to add in images. Let's say that I want to add in an image for green. Well, I can click on that icon right there and then I can drag and drop the image. In addition to using my own images, at the top you can see there are a number of GIF or GIFs that you can insert. We can select these and they are using Giphy to find these or we can use Unsplash, which is a great resource for Creative Commons Zero files. Now we will be using this functionality later, but for now, let's stick to just the text. I can also add another option. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to add in purple as well, and then scroll down. Now here we can add a image for the entire slide. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click on that, search for an image from Unsplash. So let's just type in colors, there we go. Let's find a relevant image. This is a great little image. This is another one. So let's go ahead and choose this image here and save it. That image is now part of my question. So you can see here at the top, I have my question, the image, and then as our students give their answers, the results will become visible. So let's go ahead and have a look at the preview. At the moment, my slideshow looks like this. This is what it will look like on desktop. And this is what it will look like on mobile. We can also show some test votes and this gives you an example of how that interactivity will look once people start submitting their answers. And so when I click on showing test votes, you can see the votes coming in. And let's go ahead and scroll down and look at some of the additional options for this question. And that is right here. Now the results you just saw in the preview, they were represented in a bar chart. In addition to that bar chart, you can also use a donut chart, a pie chart, or you can simply use dots to represent the largest group of votes. This is completely up to you. You can use whichever one you want and everything will be interactive. So as your votes come in, you'll get to see this bar chart or pie chart move around as well. 
At the bottom, we can toggle these switches to either show the correct answer, if this was a multiple choice with a correct answer, we can show results and percentages, or we can even let our participants choose multiple options. So let's say that we're ready, we're happy with the content of this slide, now we're going to beautify the slide. We're going to make this slide look a little bit better, a bit more appealing, and maybe add a bit of our own design style choices to it. So at the top, you will see that next to the content, we have an option to customize this. In this tab, you can now play around with the different layouts. So here you'll see there is a beta option here, and this lets you play around with different layouts of that page. So having these different layouts will enable you to not only view that image, but also have the results on the same page. So I'm going to select the following image to the left, results on the right with that code at the top. So let's go ahead and look at that preview again. We can click on preview at the top right corner and then here we get a preview of what our slide will look like. Again, this is the desktop view and this is the mobile view. Let's see the results coming in. This is what our results will look like as soon as people start voting. We're going to close our preview and continue designing our slides. Now we're going to add a second slide. Now on this second slide, I'm going to use a very different type. And here at the top, we have those interactive question types. Word cloud is a very popular one. Open-ended questions, great for getting some feedback from your classroom. We have Q&A. If you're giving a presentation, maybe those questions are coming in and you can use this. Now we also have the second block and this is the quiz competition. So let's go ahead and select one of these. I'm going to choose the first option, the select answer option. So let's go ahead and choose this type. And now we have a question at the top. Now this is great to check in with your students to see if they've really understood all the content that you're discussing. So let's go ahead and just ask a question. And instead of asking what their favorite color is, we're going to say, what is my favorite color? So let's go ahead, what is my favorite color? So now we're asking for an answer and my favorite color is green. So let's go ahead and give them those same options. Green, blue, and red. And then we're going to tick green, seeing as green is the correct answer. Scrolling down, we can add another option if we choose to do so. We can add an image and we can give them a limited time to answer. So now I'm going to set this to, let's say they get 10 seconds to answer this question. Now faster correct answers will get more points. So now you're turning it into a fun little game where all your students are competing against each other. We can have some quiz music. Now this music can be selected by clicking on that drop down box and then we can choose any of these available songs. I'm not going to add any music for now and I'm going to leave the leaderboard at the end. But if you choose not to have a leaderboard, you can click on remove leaderboard. That way there is less competition in your class. So let's go ahead and have a look at the preview of this slide. I'm now in my preview. On the left hand side, we see that quiz question one of one. The icon is waiting for them to get started. As soon as they press enter, the countdown starts. Answer fast to get more points. The question appears and then they have to choose their answer. So now they can choose green, blue, red. What is the correct answer? If they click on green, then they will see how they did. There we go. Time's up. One person selected green. It was correct. And that was the correct answer. So this shows you how your students will be responding using their mobile devices or any other device, and then how it will be represented on the slideshow on the left hand side. Let's go ahead and close the preview. And there we go. This is our second main type of question. Now here we have that leaderboard, but I'm going to add another slide. Scrolling down, we also have a number of content slides. Now these content slides are very similar to other presentation software, where it's more of a static form of content. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to add a heading. I'm going to just create a slide with a heading. My favorite color. And then a subheading. It's green. Okay, we can add again an image. So we're going to go to the image library. We're going to look for a beautiful green image. There we go, lots of green, beautiful nature. We're going to save that image, insert it onto our content slide. Now the great thing about these content slides is that you also have access to that layout generator. So when I now go to customize, what I can do here is I can play around with these layouts. So I can select any of the other layouts there we go, I'm going to have it like this, green in the background, title in the front, and then we're going to have a look at the preview. 
Again, what we see is on the left hand side, what will be represented on the desktop view or on the presentation. And then on the right hand side, we see what our students see. Now let's say that I change my mind as I'm designing this slide and I want to turn it into an interactive slide. Well, I can always go back to the type tab and I can simply select one of the other types. So for example, I click on multiple choice, that information is still there, but my content slide has now been transformed into an interactive question type. I'm going to leave it as a content slide and we're going to insert another slide to our slideshow. So let's go ahead and select one of these other types, number, quote, big text. But what I like is the video style. So let's go ahead and select video. We can have a caption. And then here, when we click on this, we can add an image. And in addition to that, we can put in a YouTube link and then that YouTube video becomes part of our slideshow. So let's go ahead and put a YouTube link in here. I'm going to pop that link in there and add it to the slide. Again, I have access to those layouts here on the next page and I can change the layout. So we can have the video on the right hand side or we can leave it as the original. Now you may have noticed that all these styles have a certain feel to it and that's because we've used that theme. Now if you want to use different themes, you can always select the different theme in the top right corner. So when you select themes, you have a number of different themes available. I'm going to select the greenhouse and you will see that this slide now has a very different feel. In addition to that, in your themes browser, you can create your own theme. That means that you can now add your own logo, your own font, your own text. Now this is part of the premium version. So if you want to use your own branding, your school logo, it's worth looking into that premium version. In addition to that, you can click on configure and the configuration of this slideshow allows you to do a number of other things. And this is the one that I like to use a lot. So here we can choose the pace of the presentation. So on the left hand side, we can use the presenter pace. That means that I'm in control of the slides. I choose when we progress to the next slide or we can use the audience pace and the audience pace will allow them to go through the slides. However, if you have a quiz type in your slideshow, you cannot select the audience pace. You will have to use the presenter pace. Now here we have a number of additional features and you can always click on expand to see more information about this. One that I use a lot is the profanity filter. So let's go ahead and expand this. Now the profanity filter has a number of different languages. You can see here, we can select the languages that we would like to filter for, or we can simply click on select all and it will automatically filter out those words. This is great when you're using this in classrooms, especially with slightly older students where they like to leave a number of inappropriate words on your slideshows, especially when you have that word cloud type. However, having this switched on will automatically cancel their submissions. So we can change this within the configuration menu. Once you're ready to get started and you're ready to present, simply click on the present button at the top. You are now in your presentation. The code is at the top. Students can join and they can start submitting answers. As you progress to the next slide, their devices will also change to the next slide. And therefore, when you have multiple types of interactive content in your slideshow, they will automatically be prompted to submit answers in these different types of content. And then finally, we have a number of sharing options. So when you click on share, you will see that you can also download that QR code. So if you're going to be running a big presentation, say for parents or students, you can download the QR code prior to that presentation, have it at the entrance, they can scan it as they walk into the room and your presentation is ready to go. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, Mentimeter has a free and a premium tier. But what's important to note is that they have special educational pricing. So let's go ahead and have a look at what they're offering. Here you can see we have the free tier and this is a great tier to get started. I've used the free tier multiple times before and it's always been a great success in class. Now the free tier has some limitations. So you are limited to only two question type slides and five quiz types. But in most situations, that is a great way to get started in the classroom. You have an unlimited audience and you can create an unlimited amount of presentations. Now, once you start looking at the basic option, you start having unlimited questions. You can also import your presentations as I demonstrated before, and that can be from PowerPoint or Keynote, and you can export your results to Excel. 
The pro version, the one we looked at today, has the additional benefit of moderating the Q&A. You can add your own custom branding, great for schools if you wanna have your school logo, or if you're a small company and you wanna have your own branding, then that would be the one you're looking for. Now the pricing we're looking at now is the educational pricing, and I'll leave a link to the educational plans in that description below if you wanna check it out by yourself. Now I hope you found this helpful. Let me know in that comment section below, have you used Mentimeter before? Are you interested in trying it out with your students? What's your favorite question type? Scroll back up, make sure that you subscribe on your way up. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.